if it is so difficult, then why should anybody want to cultivate virtues? With merits, it is unreliable. The karmic rewards that come to you are unreliable. For example, let's say you like a certain food, and you can eat as much as you like. If you want it, it is ready on the table for you. So you are a person of merit. A person who gets what he or she wants is a person of merit, karmic rewards. So you eat your good food, but then after you have eaten and your your stomach gets full, you have to go to Russia <laughs> to release it all out. And once you finish with the Russia, you have to go back and continue eating your good food. Initially, it's very satisfying to be eating your good food, but after a while, you feel that. Eating, going to Russian, eating, going to Russian, it becomes tiring, and you want to stop, but you cannot stop because somebody is putting a gun to your head and say you have to continue. I'm sorry, you have to continue. So when we cultivate merits, joy will come to us, and we will deplete our merits because our intention is to harvest the hard work of our cultivation, and so we will jump at every opportunity to deplete our merits. So eventually we'll get tired of this. We will realize that you know I work hard and I have a good life now, but then I'm depleting merits, and in the next lifetime I have no more merits, and I'm at the bottom of society. I'm of no value to society, and society mistreats me, and I'm just full of suffering. If you have that vision, you can take a step back and look at your life. Lifetime to lifetime, you see that you go up and down like a roller coaster. One lifetime, you are on top of the world. You're the king of a kingdom, or you are the billionaire of that community. Next lifetime, you're a homeless person. Everybody just treats you like trash. And then because of that, you feel humble and you suddenly help your fellow homeless people. And through merit cultivation, in the next lifetime. You begin to have more merits, and you recognize the value of merit, and you continue to cultivate merit to help other people in the community and around the world. And the following lifetime, you have even more merit, and now you're a billionaire again. And then when you have that position of wealth and power, you become arrogant, and you think that your houses are better than that billionaire next to you, right? And your cars are better than his, and you become jealous, and you want to eliminate all the threats that come to you. Any competition, any threat to your business, to your pursuit, you will eliminate them because you're in a position of power and money to be able to do so. Because of generating evil karma that depletes all your merit, and the next lifetime, subsequent lifetime, become poor and suffering again. And so you can take a step back and look at life, say up and down, up and down. It is so meaningless. I'm tired of this. I just want to have peace. Let let me have peace.、And、that's when you realize that liberation is really valuable. You will realize that the money that you have and the suffering that you have to go through is meaningless, because the suffering that you're going through in the samsara does not lead you to liberation. The joy that you have now will be taken away from you. It is like life is playing a trick on us. It teases us. He gives us some joy at one moment, and then he takes it all away from us. And then he lets us suffer, but that suffering is meaningless because we get nothing out. We put in a lot of effort dealing with the suffering, the physical energy, the mental energy we put in. We invest our mental and physical energy to deal with problems, but they don't bring permanent peace. And when you realize that. The joy and the the pain in this world, in the samsara, the cycle of life and death, is meaningless. You want to have liberation, and so merit cultivation alone does not help us because it does not allow us to propel to liberation. Without cultivating virtues, it is not only meaningless, but it is dangerous too. It's one thing for us to just deplete our merits. But it is more dangerous that when you are in a position of power, you are more likely to do bad deeds. I mean, just this year alone, you read on the news, powerful people have 
fallen from the pedestal because of their arrogance. They harass people. They think they can get away with the law. When they have merits, they can get away with the illegal things that they have done. But once they have depleted their merits, the laws will catch up to them. They will be sued, and, and there will be a case to be taken seriously. And people will eventually find out. Growing the news. Just this year alone, there have been so many people fallen, powerful people fallen because they don't have virtues. So what this is telling us is, when you cultivate merits, you will have karmic rewards. But this is not reliable. What's reliable is liberation from the cycle of life and death. And by cultivating virtues, we finding ourselves that we can enjoy a happy life in a very safe way. Right? With money and power, but you have to, to scheme, you have to hurt people in order to maintain your position of wealth and power. It is not really worth it because from the far term perspective, you will see danger, suffering ahead. But we don't normally see that easily because when we are enjoying, when we are engulfed in our joy, we don't see very far. In fact, we don't want to see that far. We want that joy, the merits that we have to last forever. And so we will try whatever we can to secure the joy, the wealth that we have. Our ego in the background will push us to do that will push us to do bad deeds, to hurt people in order to maintain our possession, in order to keep safe our position of wealth and power. And we don't want to look that far. In fact, we turn the other way. We don't even want to recognize the law of cause and effect. When we are in a position of wealth and power, it is not a safe place to be because we don't want to really see reality. We only want to continue to keep that position of wealth and power as long as we can. And it means at all costs, right? Anybody who challenges will be eliminated. And so we are turning our faces the other way and not acknowledging the law of cause and effect. Without virtues, we are really digging a hole for ourselves because when you cultivate merit without virtue, it is very easy to become arrogant, to become jealous. All the negative emotions will arise in order to protect our possessions. Without virtues, you have no self-awareness. Right? You're not aware that you are being angry. Without that awareness, you feel that your anger is justifiable. Because it's so satisfying to take your anger out on somebody. It can be very confusing when we're in the cycle of life and death. It's like a person who is being drowned in big waves and in a whirlpool. And he's trying to get out, he's trying to swim out, but he's being pulled back in. And so that's how it is like when we're in the cycle of life and death. Is when We don't know our way up and down. We're in the water and we don't know which way is up, which way is down. We go up to the heavens, we come back down to the hell, the realm, up and down, and we don't know which way is out. When we think that this way will lead to happiness, it actually leads to the evil realm. For example, a person who's angry at that moment, they don't think about the consequences. At that moment, it is very satisfying to take their anger out on somebody, right? To hurt somebody. In fact, the more that he hurts that person, his enemy, the more satisfying it is. And so he's looking for happiness, but he doesn't know that his action will lead to even more pain, full of suffering. Right? So when we are in the cycle of life and death, we don't know which way is out. Because we are all turning upside down with the waves, and there's a lot of confusion. Only once we get out of the cycle of life and death will we're going to see clearly that kindness, compassion is the way out. But while we're in the cycle of life and death, we sometimes we think that being compassionate is a weakness. Because in the world they think that you have to be aggressive in order to achieve your need. In order to be a tough person, a smart person, you have to be aggressive. But by doing that, we're going against nature. And so it's very confusing right, to, to determine, to see which way it is out. 
And so when you can see that, you will recognize the value of virtue cultivation. When we refine ourselves, we eliminate our selfishness. We eliminate our jealousy. When we have compassion, we cultivate compassion. We will realize that that is the path out, but it's not easy. And so virtue is here is that we not only have to cultivate merit, but we have to make sure that the path to liberation is there.